It's a generic Christmas song, I'm just making it up. There is no been no previously recorded studio recorded copyrighted material here. It's all free. Uncopyrighted, so use it if you want to. So there's someone I don't know if they want to sponsor this video. But so far I haven't received any credits. So who knows how much I owe. So yes. I'm just hanging some Christmas lights and seeing if they work and making sure they're weatherproof and, and hoping that uh, it brightens up the holiday and makes it more glamorous, more cosmopolitan, more beautiful. And yes, I love Christmas. I grew up with Christmas, so I know not to... Uh, not to depreciate those who don't, but uh, that's how I was raised. I was raised to celebrate Christmas. It's my tradition. So I don't uh, treat it the same way as I used to because of great knowledge, of course. Now I'm an adult, I'm not a child. I don't really believe in Santa Claus. I, I believe that uh, he's a, a mythological figure. Uh, but perhaps he was a real person. You know, what they do in folklore, in mythology, usually there is a grain of truth in mythology. Sometimes uh, it's just an uh, overly descriptive, exaggerated, distorted uh, version of, this, of the original. So there may have really been like a godlike figure, but uh, maybe instead of a sleigh and, and reindeer, he came down in a to? spaceship. You're just Longer hanging out. Gave, oh, oh I see. You have mankind. somebody who might be hungry. And who knows what they were? Maybe uh, look those over here. Genetic alterations. To He's got his hybrids. eyes on you know. and his ears open. He's coming around. Be careful. I better. Uh, I better bring out. Bring out a warning. He's distracted. So let's just. Come over here to help you. Oh, he might be quick on the draw. Oh, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, the bird is on the fence now. No, no, he's he's uh, he's safe now. He's he's on higher ground. He has the higher ground. I don't know. There he is. He's sitting on that board on top of that fence right there. See the bird? And that cat's gonna try to get him. He just took off. I'm asked to hang these lights every year. It's the same ones that I've been hanging for several years. Although uh, about uh, 10 years ago, it was a different set of lights. They were the, uh, those, what do you call them, icicles? And they were, they don't know if they were colored. I think a couple years I had, we had uh, multiple colored ones. And then uh, for a few years, we had just the straight white clear ones to simulate, you know, real icicles. But uh, I don't know what happened to them. They're very awkward. They get tangled up and and uh, they're hard to deal with because if one light goes out, they all go out and then you got to try to find out which one is burnt out. It's just a fiasco. These bigger bulbs, these bigger lights are more simple, more easy to deal with, more easy to repair, to find the, the short and, and so forth. But you know, by the time you do all that, you can purchase a whole new string. Actually, and, to do uh, this those lights safely, at Walmart, they're real cheap. I better extend the ladder because bucks. they say you, you wait never till, want uh, to. You know, after the holidays, they're real cheap. Or just before Christmas. They say you never want to stand in this top rung. Never. Because you can lose your balance. So I won't do that. They say, I believe they say you want to only stand on the, this one here, no, no further. 
but uh, I'm going to extend this ladder to more vertical so that I can reach higher without uh, and still be safe. Climb the ladder. So they say that uh, you want to measure the distance between the, the vertical wall to the, to the bottom of your ladder. And uh, I don't remember how many feet, but this it's a percentage. It's like uh, I don't know how many, so many feet. They show you actually. They show you a a, a line on the uh, a little L on the ladder. Shows you how the the right angle. Here's the line, and you know what? I, I kind of felt that I wasn't far enough out. But you see, this is what I mean the distance from the it's it's so many feet high, so many feet extended of the ladder, and then you and then so many feet based on the height of the ladder, so many feet away from the vertical wall that you're next to to the bottom of this ladder. But you could just use this L. I guess it's a part of OSHA to have these little little diagrams on here to show people who aren't in the, con the construction industry, you know, homeowners, an easier way to, to judge it. But you just have to line up this L to make sure the L is vertical, and it's still not quite vertical. See, it's still kind of too far in. But it's like a boot. Like an Italian boot, you know, like uh, the Italian peninsula. I don't see Sicily anywhere. I don't see Sicily anywhere. It's a little island over here somewhere. But they didn't put it over here. So yeah, now we're vertical. I believe it says one quarter... The length from, it looks like, see, it's not, it's not this wall. They're drawing a triangle from the top, top of the ladder, where the top highest point where it's contacting the house, to draw a straight plumb line all the way down, and then measure from that to here. And they're saying that it should be a quarter of the length of the height, if I'm interpreting that correctly.
Yeah, I'm not wrapping. I'm not wrapping them around those hooks. I'm just resting them on there. It seems to be secure enough. There's enough weight that it won't blow off uh, unless it's really, really windy. In that case, I would have to. I would have to kind of wrap it around just once. But I don't want to if I don't have to. I'm going to rest this ladder against this fence. Just for added support since I'm on the uh, mulch kind of uh, unstable ground. So when it's unstable ground, I've got to put it rested against something for stability with the hands. So I got this green wire, it's braided, it's twisted, it's strand, it's three strands, sockets, clips, light bulbs, lenses, uh, fuses. It's all here. Plugs. Uh, what uh, strand that's hanging down, so I don't have any more hooks up there. It's not really not necessary. I mean, of course, put it in your backyard. I mean, I'm not have, I'm not anticipating having any company over for parties. I'm kind of all partied out since uh, my ch since my teenage and uh, early twenties. I did a lot of partying when I was younger. But I find those things not to be desirous or interesting anymore. When you look at the, uh, when you look at it from a greater perspective, it's, uh, it's really uh, kind of useless and, and it doesn't really uh, bring fulfillment or uh, honor or. Uh, it's, it seems like it's pleasurable for the moment, but then you wake up with a hangover and you feel terrible and you feel terrible uh, physically, mentally, and spiritually. It's like a huge vacuum the next day after you wake up, after you've done some heavy drinking and some other sinful uh, activities. You wake up feeling like, yuck, why'd you do it in the first place? You have regrets afterwards. So you better just uh, live for God while you're young. That's what the book of Ecclesiastes says. The Bible, written by a very, very... Uh, respectful and uh, honorable individuals who had a close relationship with the Almighty God, the Creator. They knew what they were talking about. They were inspired by the God's Holy Spirit when they wrote down those uh, lessons and those letters for us to read, those manuscripts, those sacred texts, instructing us how to, how to behave, how to think, how to act, how to feel. That... Uh, that God wants us to be uh, happy and, uh, and we can find true happiness when we're in God's care and when we're living according to His designs, His patterns, His, uh, His uh, parameters. He's already mapped out how to have a good life. And if we live according to God's will, we'll have that. Will have that life, that peace, that per, that that surpasses all understanding. We'll have that uh, contentment. We'll have that uh, that joy that doesn't that joy that's not based on circumstances, which are so fickle. Circumstances are always are are not stable. Circumstances could be good or bad in any in any given time. You can have a good day. You can have a bad day. But if you have the joy of the Lord, it's continuous. Because joy, the joy of the Lord, is not contingent on your circumstances. That's why it's more superior. It's more superior to have the joy of the Lord than to have joy predicated on what, what's happening at, uh, at any particular moment in time or history. Joy surpasses all that. The eternal joy, 
heavenly joy, joy that, that's given by God as a gift to his followers, to his disciples. Yeah, I got this ladder. It's leaning. It's on the sidewalk. It's kind of partly on the driveway, but it's leaning. It's resting on the stucco. Stucco that's adjacent to the garage door, which eventually has to be uh, repaired or, or replaced because it's kind of old and messed up. And so, but that's an extra few thousand dollars, uh, which we have to save up for. So we're not ready to do it to do it now. But uh, I'm going to take this ladder to the side of the house and. Uh, and lean it against something else. <laughs> so where, where am I going to lean it against? This wheelbarrow? This pony wall. This pony wall. I'm going to lean it against this pony wall. Uh, where this fence is erected. I got weeds here and gravel and leaves. And I got mesh underneath it. This I can close this gate. But I have to, I have to kick this rock out first. It's not really a rock. I mean, it's got rocks in it. But you see, it's just a broken off piece of concrete. Concrete is a mixture of uh, calcium that they put in it to, I believe, to harden it or to, or to slow it down or to make it stronger. But they have other ingredients in it, but they mix it together in concrete, these concrete trucks. And sometimes they mix it by hand with those portable mixers. And it's, so it's uh, not authentic rock, although it's got rocks in it, see? But I'm going to close this gate now, because, uh, see this latch? Latch. It's got screws in it. Phillips heads, uh, tapered screws, they're long, elongated screws, they're, there's brass screws, I got, uh, galvanized screws, I got, uh, and they, they're uh, counter, they're countersunk heads, and uh, you know, and it's it's fortified with a uh, some kind of a tubular. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, what kind of metal it is. I don't know if it's galvanized steel or it's not stainless steel, is it? It's maybe, could be some kind of an alloy or a mixture. It's a mixture. It's not. This. Most metals are mixtures, but you've got different types of uh, percentages of each kind of mineral or element. You got alloy, you got aluminum, you got steel, you got all these things, and they, they make they have a different process for each kind of steel that they that they work in their foundries that they create. And they mix all these elements together to create certain types of metals. Some light metals, some heavy duty metals, some. Uh, all kinds of metals, fire resistant, heat resistant metals, um, shock proof metals, uh, 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 rust proof metals, all kinds, corrosion proof metals. They probably use that in uh, those kind of metals up in space because they have to endure those very harsh, uh, 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 non-protective, they don't have a protective, they're out there in space away from the protective atmosphere, so they're you have to deal with uh, heavy radiation and heavy uh, whatever else is thrown at them. So you might be asking, what are you doing with this? Well, I'm pulling some tape, just a little bit. I'm not going to fully wrap it, but I'm going to put this over the top to act as a, sh a, a, a moisture shield if it rains. Because I don't want water uh, getting in these plugs. You see these plugs right here? This one's facing down, but I got other ones over here that are facing up. And I'm just afraid that if water gets there, it's going to short it out. And then I might blow a fuse or, I mean, uh, a, a circuit. So I don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put this duct tape on top of this plug. You see the lights? This one's, this green one's blinking.
pot in there and then it won't dry out. So what I want to do is probably just let it overhang so the water can so, so the water won't collect in it. So if you wrap it, the water's gonna collect in it. So I want it just to kind of cover the top of it. Of course, I don't know if that's adequate. It should run off. overhang right here so the water should just roll down that and drip over the top in theory there may not be a tight seal right here so water could get underneath there so if I put this over here and overlap it to the back of the plug and see now I got it now I got like a roof tile you know, kind of like a roof tile over here you start from the bottom and then you look and then you work your way up to the top, and that's how you get the, you want the overlap to be from the top down, not the bottom up. The same principle is when you put uh, tar paper underneath the stucco. You always want to start at the bottom, work your way up, because you want the overlap to be from top to bottom. You want the top layer to overlap the bottom layer uh, down below it. That's how you keep water out, moisture out.